Yes, it looks like our messiah is a very cheap model. But does that mean it is points efficient or just plain bad? That's what we'll be getting into today as we look at the Patriarch and Gene Stealers in the Gene Stealer Cult Army. If you notice something different about me, I got a new set of clothes. It is still me. Don't worry. But first we need to look at something about the Acolyte Hybrids. Now I said in the past from my interpretation, rules as written, that when Gene Stealer models and units come back, they come back as they were. As in literally, it's the same guy getting back up. So if you've used your demolition charges, you don't get new demolition charges. That was rules as written. We now have the rules commentary and rules as intended. Page 11, returning models to a unit. Some rules resurrect or return models to a unit. Such models are added to their unit along with any war gear and enhancements they started the battle with. So if you are a third generation neophyte and you wonder where your second generation daddy is gone, he went out and came back with more demolition charges, which means that you have a very excellent tactic of having lots of small units with demolition charges. They throw it, they blow up, they get shot at and go for a sleep and then go to the shops, get more demolition charges, turn up as a blip, and from that blip, once they're set up, move, advance, throw more demolition charges. Because demolition charges are assault weapons. So it is the same guy, of course. The legendary heroes of the Gene Stealer cult never die, but they do go out for more once per game demolition charges. So now the explosion train genuinely never ends. Get some demolition charge acolytes. I would say you're really getting your points worth, but demolition charges cost no additional points. I also wanted to quickly dispel another tactic I'd heard from Gene Stealer Cult players about returning models to a unit and then conga lining those new models onto an objective. Page one of the rules commentary, you set up models in coherency with models that were already on the board before you added any models. So you can't chain out new models you have deployed. If you add one neophyte left with an icon, the returning, let's say, six models would all have to be placed within two inches of that icon model because that was the only model on the board when the call went out to bring on more troops. I mean, to get back up. Okay, the Patriarch. Gene Stealer Cult have a massive advantage in 10th edition of 40k, and that comes from one of our glaring disadvantages. The 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000 is all about pairing individual leaders to units to make them more powerful force multipliers and knowing which leader to choose to go with which unit. Well, because the Gene Stealer Cult have such a tiny roster of units to pick from, the best unit to pair a leader with is perhaps the only unit that you can pair that leader with. So let's have a look at one such example today. The Patriarch, who really, really needs some Gene Stealers to go with him. The Patriarch does not have Lone Operative, so he cannot feasibly be deployed by himself. With six wounds and toughness five, yeah, he's got some toughness on him, but two Terminators will do better. What he does have is the same as other Gene Stealer Cult units, Deep Strike, so he can appear on the board later on, but then we're looking at being nine inches away. The other option is Infiltrate, so he can set up on the board already, and then you can get charged by the enemy the first turn when you don't get the dice roll going your way. Hmm. We'll look at ways to deal with that in a minute. He has five attacks with these Patriarch Claws, and these retain the ability to reroll your failed wounds because they have the Twin Linked ability. There's two of them. They pair up quite nicely, and the other two are also there. Five attacks, so one more than the number of arms he has. Hitting on two, strength six, minus two, and two damage. You can cut your way through your points equivalent of Space Marines in one go, in theory. Remember, for 85 points, this guy is the equivalent of five tactical Marines. If you could take a squad of five tactical Marines, you can't, they're unit locked to 10. These abilities alone will not help the Patriarch do a lot, and you can't do multiple Patriarchs because he's an epic hero, so you only get one in your Gene Stealer Cult army. Kind of makes sense from the lore. Although we've also had cases where there's multiple Patriarchs and it was like a <gasps> surprise or like two cults merged together and retain both Patriarchs rather than there being some kind of civil war thing. But the Patriarch needs Gene Stealers to protect him. Then he gets the ability to advance and charge, which is something you get from having the Gene Stealers because then the whole unit 
has the ability to advance and charge. Remember, once you put a leader inside a unit, that is now a whole unit for the rest of the game. So he could advance and charge either from infiltrate or from just being in the deployment zone and hiding behind buildings as you move up. Advance and charge, attack the enemy and scare them away with cosmic horror, which is done at the start of the fight phase. Enemy units within six inches must take a battle shock test. This is very useful if you want to hit those Death Star balls that you know are going to pull a bunch of command point shenanigans. Once per game, you can double the range of that using your Psychic Familiar, so you can have a 12-inch Fear Bomb. The effectiveness of that will depend on the leadership of the enemies and whether they've got Commissars and things like that. For scoring the primary objective, the enemy will recover before objectives are scored at the start of their turn. But if you last long enough, you could use this Cosmic Horror in your fight phase so that the enemy are scared off objectives and you can control it at the start of your turn. And it's also very useful for controlling it for secondary objectives at the end of turns and things like that. Again, it's leadership dependent on how good the enemy is. Now there's not a lot of great enhancements the Patriarch can take, but it doesn't matter. He's an epic hero. Page 56 of the main rulebook, epic heroes cannot have enhancements. So it doesn't matter that they're no good for the Patriarch, he couldn't take them anywhere. It also means that for your Crusade, you can't gain any XP. So if you had, from 9th edition, a leveled up Patriarch for your Crusade army, you're going to lose all of your bonuses. Really sucks. The Patriarch is cheap, and that is fair because it gets more from its bodyguard than the Gene Stealer bodyguard gets from him. The Patriarch gains Advance and Charge. The Gene Stealers do get Devastating Wounds ability so that they actually have Rending on their Rending Claws. But I think for Gene Stealers, you'll probably only see one unit of Gene Stealers because... Hi. Um. So. Hi, it's uh, me from the future. Ignore what this version of me is saying. We're the same person. Don't get confused by the two different outfits. He just said... I, I just said, you'll probably only see one unit of Gene Steelers with a Patriarch. Well, I just played against Dark Eldar, and three units of Gene Steelers, all infiltrating, all being able to charge on the first turn, is actually very effective for tying up all of the nasty things you don't want moving around and shooting you. So that's how you get to table someone by turn three. Okay. Many Gene Stealers also works. Other schools of thought are available. Two squads of Gene Stealers, one with Patriarch, and then also an infiltrating Abominant Aberrant team. This is also a good idea. Okay, I'll let him get on. Okay, okay, you'll see me later. I'm sure that I'll get myself back at some point. Right, bye. We can only have one Patriarch. The Patriarch never comes back, and Gene Stealers don't easily come back with the faction rule, so they're not worth having compared to, say, Acolyte hybrids with demolition charges. Pure strain gene stealers are not battle line. What a daft idea having the unit that the army is named after as a core part of it. <laughs> How very foolish of us to think that. They're different from the Tyranid gene stealers because they have infiltrate instead of scout. And they're different from their 9th edition variant because they now have two wounds, which makes them more survivable to things like Overwatch and Flamers and stuff. The pure strain gene stealers also are now reduced to a 5 plus invulnerable save. I think the extra wound kind of offsets that. The gene stealers and the Patriarch are a unit that is going to need support. And while we're on that topic, I could do with some support. So I now have a Kofi and a stream elements. The links are in the description, so if you would like to support me by giving some money, please, please, you can now do so. And you don't get nothing for doing so. Not only are you helping me to continue make these videos, you also get perks if you tip the money through Ko-fi. That includes being able to decide what videos come next and getting one-to-one -one advice on armies, units, painting, and things like that. That is the hat that is on the ground. You can drop money in if you so like. You know the link. Let's go on to supporting the Gene Stealers themselves. If infiltration goes wrong, and the enemy has flamers nearby, have a Primus in the back and on the board. Then you can redeploy that one unit of Gene Stealers and Patriarch, as well as two others. So we're definitely going up in the world. And not just because we're tunneling up from underground. Now the decoys and misdirection ability for the Primus is a redeployability that comes after deployment, but before the first turn. 
Annoyingly, there are two steps between then, so we're assuming it comes in step 8, which is resolve pre-battle abilities, and so after step 7, which is to determine the first turn. So if you've deployed your Patriarch and Gene Stealers ready to destroy an enemy unit, and then the enemy has deployed some flamers in front of it, or the enemy gets the first turn, use the Primus ability to either pull them back, put them into reserve to turn up by Deep Strike, or put several units that can infiltrate, say another unit using this enhancement, and put them all on one side of the board, far away from any nasty flamers and the Overwatch ability, Look at the Overwatch ability in this video if you'd like to know more. And then you can hit the enemy where they're most vulnerable on the flank in the first turn. Because you'll know who is getting the first turn. You or your opponent. First turn strikes are going to be very effective for Gene Stealers. Especially since people are used to, if they played against Gene Stealer Cult before, they're very used to us just basically skipping our first turn and waiting for the second turn before we can do anything particularly nasty. I hope you can keep up and not just with the speed that I'm talking. Okay, once in combat, our glorious Saint Patriarch still has their pretty nasty claws, as do the Gene Stealers, with a very similar minus 2 AP hitting on a 2+, plus, and with their four arms giving four attacks. So that is how I would use the Patriarch and the Gene Stealers as part of a bigger Gene Stealer cult army. I have a playlist of other Gene Stealer cult abilities if you want to check that out, but I'm going to leave you with a reminder of how to use Acolyte hybrids now that I've explained how to get more boom forever. And our Patriarch Saint can go on leading the cult. Until you see me in the next video, my darlings and viewers, have a great day of 40k.